Patty Elf line has been more like a like a three week old patty melt. You know, just sitting in the back of the fridge, you forgot about it. It's growing things. Hasn't quite worked out. Where I, I'll admit, I was wrong. I whiffed on Pat Elf line. I, I thought him moving from center, where he was the worst center in the NFL, moving to guard, you know, getting him away from Snacks Harrison, the 330 pound nose tackles that smell like garlic. Yeah, get him away from that. Uh, let him get outside, use his movement skills, and he'll be fine. But, yeah. Uh, uh, not, not not so much. I mean, Pat Elfline, he has been a liability all season at that left guard spot when he wasn't injured. And, you know, he went from being the worst center in the NFL to being one of the worst guards, you know, especially in pass blocking, where uh, Elfline was tied for the NFL lead in sacks allowed for a guard with six. Not great. As well, he was the 10th highest. Um, he was 10th highest in the NFL uh, for guards with pressures allowed at 32, which is not great. Ooh, number one in the league was Billy Turner with 45. Ooh. Packers paying eight million bucks for turnstile. That, that's great. Also, go Niners, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with Elfline, his PFF pass blocking grade of fifty one point three was also seventy seventh in the NFL among guards, qualifying guards. So let's do the math here. Thirty two teams, two guards per team, sixty four. So Pat Elfline graded below some backup slash reserve guards who either got replaced the starter or had to fill in because of injury. So he's below that. <sighs> Great. And honestly, if they kept Elfline around, maybe it works out with Dennison. Maybe he can become a solid backup. But I, I do not think for a second that he should be handed the starting left guard position like he was this year. I mean, uh, yes, he, he finally got to have a full year in the strength program. I, I thought that was going to be one of the advantages that he had coming in. Also a clean slate with Rick Dennison as a run game coordinator and O-line coach. But it didn't work. It, it just didn't work. And the Vikings offensive line, which was starting to gel towards the end, was starting to get its stuff together. Brian O'Neill was a stud. Garrett Bradbury was certainly on the upswing. Josh Klein, when he he was healthy, was certainly looking uh, to live up to that contract. Riley, Riley Reef was... More on him a little bit later on. So that left side was the Achilles heel of the Vikings offensive line, and especially Pat Elfline. He needs to go, right? Like the experiment is over. Honestly, when Dakota Dozier filled in at left guard when Elfline was out, I, I didn't notice a difference. I just really didn't. And it, it did seem like Elfline saved his worst performances for the worst possible time. And also, you know, the fact that Brett Jones never got the time of day before he ended up on IR, as well as Drew Samia was a healthy Game day scratch was like 16 out of 17 games. He only got to play against the Bears game. So you have a fourth-round pick, uh, a guard that just exudes nastiness, and he just never got his ass off the bench. And I don't know if it was something with Samia. Maybe he is actually behind the curve, or maybe it's uh, you know Zimmer slash Dennison being hard on rookies. I don't know. I mean, they're pretty okay with Garrett Bradbury, so maybe it does say more about Samia than anything else. But, I mean, with Elfline, he's not the answer. And potentially Ole Udo kicking the guard. Is he an answer? Maybe Dakota Dozier. Probably not. I think he's more of a journeyman backup, which is fine for this role. Uh, but also that's the role that Pat Elfline should be in. And also, is Drew Samia going to step up in year two? The Vikings should certainly uh, invest a high draft capital into uh, guard as well. I believe they have a fourth-round compensatory pick. So first, second, third, fourth, or fourth. One of those should be in tier offensive linemen competing for that starting left guard spot. Because this certainly should not turn into another Vietnam of Tom Compton and Mike Remmers. And finally, at the end of the season, uh, after 2018, the Vikings admitted their mistake. Tom Compton was not the answer. He was not resigned, and Mike Remmers was cut. And frankly, I, I think the Vikings need to address the Pat Elfline situation the same way. It was like, okay, we stuck it out for a year. It clearly didn't work, so let's uh, move on to plan B, C, D, F, G, whatever. Uh, but Pat Offline Plan A certainly ain't, ain't going down. Are right, your thoughts, Pat Offline? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. Join, hit the join button down below. Become a monthly Jerome Platinum Jerome, uh, as well as uh, support the work on Venmo. Plus, go to follow on social media as well. But the next time, Skull Production Value.